to the arch for a campaign with the confidence rising. I told WDF don't switch, good times are coming, don't even eat diving. Bank cams, reactions, watch along, still the pride of London thriving. The eagles of South they flying, keep your eyes on us, we ain't hiding. Brothers muted again. That's why I've waited to say something because I saw us too muted. Evening, <laughs> evening, everyone. <laughs> um, this is the match reaction to our 1 1 draw away at Forest yesterday. Uh, well, we didn't lose, we didn't lose, but it's a game we, we could easily have won. Um, JC, how's it been? Yeah, good man. Um, like I said to you before we started, I didn't watch the game, I watched the highlights, so I'm just here for the vibes. So when we do the player ratings, I, I can't give you any ratings. I'll do it. Then, <laughs> <laughs> yep, all good. Um, just uh, enjoy enjoy Nice on Sunday today. Absolutely. And hey, if you haven't seen the vlog yet, make sure you go watch it. Chairman did an outstanding job. Outstanding it, 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 job. I, I apologise, Chairman, but it's the first go. It was. <laughs> Better than Dan. Yay. <laughs> yeah, it isn't easy to be fair. So um fair play to you. Right, let's get into it because <laughs> like I said, I'm, I'm happy with a point. I was I was happy with a point before the game. I was happy we left with a point. I, I was just left feeling I, I kind of gave me looting vibes where it's like we take our chances. It's like two, three nil, you know. Um, I can't start with you, JC, because you didn't watch the game, did you? Dan? <laughs> did you watch the game? <laughs> I did watch the game. Uh, what was your take it. on it? Let, let's start with the first half. Um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, the first half, I'm trying to remember what happened exactly in the first half. I mean, I think Forest controlled certain areas very well, I think they pressed us very well in the middle, and I think that did kind of stop our like keep us keeping the ball. But the thing is, I felt like Forrest didn't really do anything with the ball. Like, especially in the first half, they didn't create any clear-cut chance. The only shots they really had were either difficult chances or shots from like outside the box. So in that sense, we defended very well. Obviously, we scored as well. Um, we did create some other decent chances, like obviously um, Eze's one-on-one uh, could have, should have arguably scored that. Um, and I think, uh, and I think even Matera Munoz also had uh, a couple of like half chances as well, from what from what I remember. Um, yeah, and I, to be honest, I thought towards the end of the first half, I thought Forrest were getting very frustrated. Like, you could, for, for, well, from what I could see, it's, uh, what it sounded like, it sounded like the crowd were kind of getting on on Forest back a bit. Um, and I feel like they, they were getting quite frustrated going into going to the end of that first half. Yeah, I mean. Going into the game, I, I sent a tweet out saying that it's very going to be very important to try and quiet the crowd early. They've just had the points deduction, so they're going to be riled up because of that. And I believe that um, they were sending like condolences to I believe it was the next player as well. So with all these factors behind them, you expect and obviously <clears throat> the city ground to be absolutely rocking. And us getting that goal very early on. I think it contributed to silence in the crowd. But Ch Chairman, you had an observation regarding the crowd. Yeah, um, you yeah. Obviously, uh, you know, we went last year, and it was honestly, it was unbelievable. You know, we were sat next to the uh, home fans. But this year, I mean, even before the game started, before the players came out, you know, the the music over the sound system was about a thousand decibels, and you know, there was really ramping it up and lots of flag waving. But it it, it really didn't. It really didn't, you know. They they just were very very. I think they were nervous, probably. You know, like they, it was a it was a must not lose game for them, but they probably needed to win massively. And um, obviously, before we scored, which is very early, which helps, they were they were very quiet. And to be fair, they did you didn't hear them until they scored. And then for about five minutes after that, they sort of went quiet down. And funny funny enough, actually. Probably 10, 15 minutes after they scored is probably when we had our best part of the game. Um, um, we had our most control of the game, I would say. But yeah, the crowd was 
if you was a Forest fan, disappointingly quiet. Okay, yeah, like <clears throat> I'm just happy, like I said, that we we did manage to to silence the crowd. And you know what? Let, let, let's talk through our first goal because that pass from Lerma was mad. Like literally, I have the needle stuff there. Um, You've seen Lerma try stuff like that many, many, many times, and it just never worked. Uh, no, that that it's, time it did. Um, Ebbs almost miscontrols it as well. Uh, but it's good that he had the presence of mind to just roll it into Mateta. And and this is why I always get confused it, with Mateta. I think if it, if it stuck to his feet, I think Eze would have shot. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. The fact so, that yeah. it rolled away, he had, he to, had pass to pass. It. Yeah. And this is a bit where it confuses me as to what foot Mateta is, because he's finished that really well, to be fair. <laughs> it's a very, very good finish, you know. Um Mateta, was that five, three goals, two assists, or something like that? I know he, I know he's got. I know I don't know the last couple games, but I know all season, it's sixteen appearances, six goals, four assists. So he's got ten, ten GA in sixteen, I think. So it's actually very good. It is. Um, what? I mean, Jason, like, what's your thoughts on him and going forward as well? Like, I know the big debate is, should I mean, he stay? Should he go? I mean, at the moment, yeah, he's under Glasner. He's looking like the French Drogba at the moment. He's scoring for fun. And to be fair, we knew Mateta always had it in him. Even under Roy, we knew Mateta always had a player in there. There was just nothing going for him whatsoever. And because of that, he just didn't have any confidence and he was all over the place. But now you look at Mateta, you're looking at him thinking... Yeah, this is the player that we bought from Mines. This is the... I think when we bought him, I think he was the fifth highest goal scorer in the Bundesliga for like the last four years from when we bought him. And you're thinking, well, you can see now why. Because he's always he's, he's in the right position. He's got a good, good left foot, good right foot. Still pretty crap with his head. But he can score a goal like Brighton. Like, that was an incredible header. So... Mateta's always had it in him. He's just never been played in a system that he thrives under. But now, where he's got players in close proximity to him in this new Glasner formation, he just seems to thrive. This just seems to be very Mateta formation. And if anything, the what the person that I feel like Glasner Glasner's new style alienates is really Edward, because he likes to sort of drift wide and then come in as a striker. Whereas now you've got three guys who are very close together at all times up front. Edward can't really do that. Granted, he's injured right now. So he hasn't actually got a time in the team to get a run at it. But it's it's making the potential sale of Edward look a lot more understandable than Selmateta at the moment. I mean, that was going to be my, my next question. Who who do we let go if any? And, and I think it has to be someone because we, we we need we need a striker that runs in behind. I think I think that's pace is something we're lacking at the moment in the final third. It, it slows down whether it's Ebbs, whether it's Ayu, whether it's Mateta. It does slow down a bit in the final third. Yeah, I think. Are, are you with JC? Like, is everyone else with JC and saying that Eddie Eddie might be the one to have to go now? I mean, I do, I do, I do agree in the sense of, uh, like, I think Mateta is a lot more suited to um, to uh, Glasner's system because, like, Glasner had uh, Vut Veghorst when he was at um, uh, Wolfsburg. He had Colin Moani when he was at Frankfurt for, for a season. Can't remember who he had the other season, but um, I think Mateta is definitely a lot more suited to it. I think, it, it, I think the thing is with Eddie is that yeah, you have to kind of shoehorn him in a little bit. I think he can play in that forward role, but obviously. When you've got Eze and you've got Elise, like you're never he's never gonna start there. Um and yeah, he probably if we can get if we can make our money back on him, I think that's probably something we should look to do. Um unless he miraculously manages to improve his hold up play and stuff like that. But I mean I can't see that happening. Yeah. But I, I will but I will say though that if you have a different system, Edward's still definitely the better player out of the two. But because Mateta suits Glasner and Glasner seems to be the the future idea, Mateta's got to be the number one at the moment. 
Don't you think, though, that even if we kept Edouard, we're still probably a striker short? Yeah, so I was going to caveat what, what I was saying is that assuming we get another striker, and obviously if we don't get a striker, then obviously I don't want him to go, but that's on the proviso that like we need we would yeah. need we would need other people. And to be honest, I'm gonna say plural, like we need we will need other players in mm. who can at least play in that role. Yeah, I think if Edward goes, we need to get two strikers in, for example. Sort of oh, like yeah. we need... in and then another you... person to challenge JP. You need four strikers. You need a, like a kid striker coming through. You need your two main strikers and a backup striker, didn't you? And yet the problem is we've only got two strikers. That's it. Full stop. We're probably two strikers short at the moment. So letting Eddie go is fine, but do probably need two more strikers. Of which one would you'd hope we're walking into the first team. But what you just mm. just on a point before we carry on about Matea I think the biggest difference in Matea I think is his hold up play his hold up play is so much better now bringing you know he's holding the ball up he's bringing other players in um, especially like obviously having Eze back helps but yeah he's he bringing him to the, into the play but mm. yeah so. I think his, his composure on the ball lately has been quite outstanding as well like he will yeah. take a touch look up now instead of just pass it you actually look up turn and start to run at people like we saw it in the looting game he skinned Doherty yeah a few times and mm -hmm. like he was coming in from the wing you're thinking he's not fast but he's he's doing the job yeah his his whole whole, whole round game has has improved which means he's now creating space for others you know before he would like just back to goal and his touch and everything and everything will be so congested but because he's a bit more versatile with his style of play but he still yeah. has his moments though like oh absolutely what, yeah. what, what, what what was the game where all the commentators said oh that's a lovely dummy from Mateta but he just missed the ball completely oh, oh, wait, that's that's when... yeah Wolves, Mateta, isn't it? Mateta is a lovely dummy yeah, it was it was, it was a horrible shot. Yeah, there, no? it went under his foot and it left. Yeah. It left um, Eddie free. As they scored. As they as they as they as they come by yeah, one or two. Yeah, so he's still got a clangor in him, but yeah. <laughs> oh well. Absolutely, uh, Jesse. Just a few comments. We'll, we'll go through them and then we'll talk about another player in this system. Big up Tim. Big up guys. Happy Easter to everyone who's celebrating. Uh, Dragon Games should have taken our chances. Definitely, mm -hmm. there's a certain player that I think Rich is going to make us talk about when it comes mm -hmm. to visiting chances. <laughs> Big up day, evening gents. How's it going? I think we got him for nine and a half million, which was looking like a bargain. I think we actually got him for less. I think it was yeah, eight, it was wasn't eight. it? it was eight. So, I, I remember it being eight. I think it's eight. It may have been seven point five because it was meant to be fifteen. I think we got it for half. Back in it. It's gonna get a drink. But yes, you are right in who I said we're gonna discuss. Now, this is not just based on the chances missed. I'm talking about the system. Epps is really good in a 10, as a sole 10. But is he struggling a bit in this system? And if he is, why? Because I have my theories. But I think be because, because of um, how Glasner plays, he has, so he does play a front three. But they are technically tens because they're very, they can be very inside and they can be very outside at the same time. So, like, wherever the ball is, all three of them move over. So, basically, if the ball's on, um, let's say, if the ball's on the right side with Ayu, Ayu will then be playing as a winger, JP will then be the striker, and then Eze will be the 10 right in the middle. And then if it's on the other side, Eze will be the winger on the left. I will be the 10 in the middle, and then um, JP will be the striker, sort of just following the ball around. I think he does struggle out wide, Eze, because I think he needs, because he's both footed, he's, he needs the ability to go both ways. Whereas if you're on the touchline, you really can only go one way. And then you, if you're not used to being out wide, you sort of turn into a bit of a one trick pony. And I think that's how Eze got found out. I think early early on in the season he was played as a left winger under Roy and he was dreadful early on in the season. But I think that I think Eze will will grow into this role. It's slightly different, and we actually when we bought him from QPR he 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 was a ten, 
but mm. he was actually deployed as a right winger most of the time under QPR. Yeah. Which many people have seemed to have forgotten. So he can actually play on both wings if you really want him to. He just hasn't done it for a while. But I'm sure that he's he's not young, but um, he's still at the age where he can learn a new position, let's say. And I don't think that 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 ten role that Glasner wants him to play is that different from any other ten role that he has played at Palace because he has played out wide for Roy pretty much his whole lifetime at, at Palace, mm. and then he played in the ten for Vieira and at the end of Roy, and basically this is just sort of playing in the middle of those two really. It's sort of like a, a slightly wider ten, so I think he can grow into the role. Here's here's my theory. I generally think he's struggling and it's more so because of Mitchell. And here's why. I use got Munoz, who's very technically gifted to bounce off. Mitchell isn't really on that wavelength. So when Ebbs gets the ball, I feel at times he's quite isolated. Whereas when Ayu gets the ball, he knows Munoz gone. You know, um, which once again then allows him, he, it means that Ebbs can only really go in one direction because Mitchell's trundling along down the sideline quite slowly. The other factor, I think, with Michael not being there, with no check, the only one who's technically gifted in that team outside of Ebbs is Wharton. So it's kind of like it gives it to Lerma, Lerma will play the safe pass. Wharton's the only one I think that could. Could bounce it with like and bop it with Ebbs because you know Ebbs like these one twos and, and I don't think he's been able to do that this season mainly because of the injuries. So yeah, it's de- he'll he'll definitely grow into that role and I think granted if he's, he's with us next season, I think he'll he'll be on fire in that role. You know, having a France or back with him or uh, Jez if he's fit, Michael when he's fit, you know, not a schlap. Um, <laughs> just having someone that's got a bit more quality. Up there with him because Mateta's trying. I have to give Mateta credit. He is trying to be that link up player with Ebbs now. You know, you can see they're getting a nice little partnership together. So, but if think... if that's what you're thinking, then wouldn't it be a good idea to maybe try or schlup at this left wing back role because he will drive forwards a lot more than Mitchell will. I yeah, defensive, do defensively, yeah. so bad. <laughs> yeah, no, but but you're you're talking about you're 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 sitting there saying Mitchell's not helping Ebbs, but yeah, I feel do like Shrap would help Ebbs a lot more in that role. Do you know what what I think would actually work? It's a quick change. Just swap Ebbs and Ayu because Ayu can make those runs for himself. Uh, Ayu wasn't very have... good yesterday, though. Be fair. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. And I was. It was about Eze. Mm-hmm. Is that? He got a lot of ball, yes, he, and when he ran with the ball, he actually did really well. But the little passes, little tricks and flicks didn't work at all. He gave the ball away so many times. I think he, mm. in the second half, he gave up just trying to play one two because oh, I, I agree exactly what you're saying, is that he hasn't got that person to bounce off. But a lot of it broke down because of his actual he underhit or overhit the passes. But in the second half, he did something different. He actually ran more of the ball and was just yeah. shooting at the end of it. But I was was very poor yesterday for his standards. He was it was just he got substitute, but he was just not in the game at all. Mm. Absolutely. And and Mitch, I see your comment there. Lerma's pass was phenomenal. We did say that. We did say it was a great forward pass. And I think mm. I think if he could do that more often, I know he's tried it, but it's just not come off. Mm. You know, so once the, he gets that the, right. The thing is, is that's the reason why we rate check so highly, because he can yeah. do that once, twice, mm. three times a game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Can I make a point, I'm actually? More, I'm more into. You know when Eze missed a chance, a one-on-one with a keeper? The pass from Morton to Eze was as, oh, as good quality. as that pass. So good. As good as that pass from Lerma. As good, if not better, because he threaded yeah. it from virtually the halfway line. Yeah. And what I did like about that, when you look at it from like, a, I think it's kind of showed like an almost a side aerial view, the movement of Mateta to allow Ebbs to get that space mm. to move into, it was it was well worked. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, what like Wharton, like you could tell the players trust him, yeah, they massively, trust yeah. him a mm-hmm. lot. for what 20 years old, mm. yeah, only just turned 20 as well. Yeah, they, they make a move and they just trust him to find them, yeah, brilliant. brilliant. I think, I think my opinion on Eze, I think 
I think his decision making for some reason, I don't know why this is, and it's kind of agreeing with um with what, what you said, Rich, is that I, I think without Elise and without like like that support around him, I feel like his decision making is quite poor sometimes. And I think that's what lets him down. Like he'll like he'll do like a silky move and then he'll just like try and do it again when he doesn't need to and he can just pass mm. it or go for a shot or something like that. But then, and also, I, I thought the same when he was playing as as a sole ten, when Elise was out. I thought the same thing. Like he was trying to do too much sometimes, and I think when Elise is on the pitch, it just alleviates that off him. Yeah. And maybe I don't know. That's I don't know. If, I don't know if it's like a panic thing or like mm. or, or what. Or like, like, on his shoulder, sort of. Foot, sort yeah. Of mm. Yeah. Exactly. And I think I I want to see it when Elise is back. How how they work together in those four positions because. Like I said, when when Elise and him played together at the end of last season and this season, they were quality. But yeah. when one of them's not there, more so when Eze is the only one there, I feel like his decision making seems to change. Yeah, I, th- I think it's also a thing of with only Eze there. Yeah, people will double up on him. It was a very, very similar thing when we had Wilf and Townsend, isn't it? When Townsend yeah. was injured, they could triple up on Wilf because he was literally our only threat. And now, without Elise, they can actually double up on Eze. But then when you've got both of them on the pitch, they, if they double up on one, the other's free. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. But yeah. they, 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 they both play better when both of them are on the pitch at the same time. Yeah, I think yeah, with yeah. I think with Eze playing in the center as well, it makes it much harder to double up on him. Because if it's if if the other midfielder like doubles up on Eze, um, then that leaves a, another midfielder in space, isn't it? When it's on the wings, and we we did it to a great effect yesterday actually, because in the first ten minutes, uh, Callum Hudson Odoi just was ripping us apart. Um, <laughs> and then and then Ward went over there as well, and Ward and Munio doubled up on him. He never he never saw him again. So it does work. Yeah. It works well when you play. You can push someone out onto the wing and then keep them out there. But when it's in the middle, it can go both ways. That makes it a bit tricky. But yeah, you're right. Uh, I mean, yeah. And and just on that, before we go back into the comments, um, this and I said it like from the first game. This system really suits us. It actually really suits us. Like, like you said, um, Callum Hudson Odoi had a lot of dry against Joe Ward. But it was a quick fix. It didn't yeah. require a whole formation change. It was just okay. We just you're just gonna have to tuck in a bit, you know. There, there's protection everywhere now, mm. if that makes sense. And I, I'm really looking like what we were seeing with Glasgow. I'm more forward thinking as well. Um, mm-hmm. We're taking the leads in games. We have just got to try and get a few more points. But I'm sure that will come. Um, JC, a few more comments. The next topic of discussion: Dean Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, big up Sean saying basically we suck. Well, um, <laughs> I guess that is never happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lerma, well, well, Lerma certainly got a good forward pass into Ebb yeah, yesterday. It was, it was uh, Sean saying Teo for me. I think that was almost having the, um, the uh, Tyrant Mitchell situation. Uh, Eze should have scored. Yep. Uh, as he needs his bro Elise back, of course. Uh, also, Decoy is always incredible, always available to receive the pass yeah, when another player gets pressured. When takes when so drama out of the build-up play. Yeah, when him and Wharton are playing together, I don't think the other team are going to get the ball. <laughs> to be honest with you, mm. <laughs> the, the that pass- is so. It's going to be so harsh on Lerma, but I get it. <laughs> also, just imagine having that depth. Like at, at seventy minutes, you can bring on Lerma. You know what I mean? Like that's just. I mean, I mean, if you want to be really, really, really like, if if you're saying that the let's say that Mark doesn't come come back, let's say you could put Lerma at the right centre back That's if you really point, yeah. wanted to. Yeah, you could. And then 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 you get all three of them on the pitch at the same time. Uh, I heard an interview where Ebbs can get in his head sometimes that he decides to win a game. Uh, he thinks he can win a game. Uh, I wonder if that mindset is what makes him make mistakes and try too hard. Mm. That's a point. What what Tim said about Eze is exactly what we said about Wilf of ten years, isn't it? Yeah. He's always trying to take the expose on, never makes a, the sensible decision, isn't it? He mm. he runs when he should shoot, he shoots when he should run, isn't it? And 
It's just about that's that's experience for you, isn't it? Something when something will click and it will happen. Unfortunately, it will happen, but it probably moved on by that point, isn't it? Mm. To be fair, that's a little bit like um are you in it? I remember when we first got him, he would dribble and never pass, but now mm. he's one of our best players because he's so unselfish now. Yeah. So he's definitely matured in that way. Big up EZ. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the first fans. So he's come over from first fan TV and that. Big up. Little, so Big up yourself. Uh, I think uh, Lerma's forward game is just suffering because he has to do and take more of Decore's workload, 100%. Yeah. The draws have been bad initially, but we aren't getting the points we need given our tough running. Yeah. To be in, fair. in isolation, like I said, yesterday's point was a good point. The Luton point was a bad point in isolation. But like I said, I think results have gone in our favour. And we got to hope that they keep doing it. Because those last seven... <laughs> we we got to say as well, though, we, we have picked up six points in five games. And at, at this end of the season, we are maybe not getting the win, but we're consistently picking points up. And, yeah. we, you know, at one stage, it wasn't that long ago, I think it was pre-Burnley, we were down to four points by relegation, weren't we? Before yeah. we, had, we said we had to... And now we've just quietly gone back up to eight points again. I know Lou never won either, but we, know we can only do what we can do. And as we said before, the stream started. In the last five games, we've led in, in all five games and yet only won one game, which is a bit disappointing. But... Um, Yes, it was a good point. As you said, I agree. Lewin was a that's a one, isn't it? Had enough chance to be three or four and up before they scored. Yeah. So, I, that take I, actually, I actually did a bit of a stat searching on that. Oh, game. wonderful. So um on that in that Luton game, we created ten chances that had an XG of uh 0.1 or better, which is like a decent chance, I think. Yeah. Um if by comparison, you have to use Roy's last six games to for for the same amount of creation. So that yeah. just shows you how much we made in that looting game. We still didn't win. It's crazy. No, it happens, isn't it? it? Happens. Did you see the um Chelsea Burnley game? Chelsea had thirty three shots against ten men and still only drew two all. So it does happen. Yeah. I think as well, like, the, I think the problem is with our point of the season now is that, what, firstly, even, to be honest, even if we lost, maybe not lost, but I think as it stands now, I think there's no chance of us going down at all, to be honest, because, like, the thing is, we can say, yeah, we've got a difficult running, but if you look at Luton's running, bear in mind they're eight points behind us. Mm -hmm. They've got to play Arsenal, Bournemouth, City, Brentford, Wolves, Everton, West Ham, Fulham. So they've got... Basically, all teams are playing for something. Ah, and, it's a similar running to us, then. Yeah, exactly. So we're like, and for them to bear in mind that they've 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 averaged zero point seven three points per game the whole season. They're not going to suddenly start averaging like twenty, like thirty percent more at the end of the season when they've got a difficult run in the fixtures as well. Honestly, I, I'd be surprised if a team even needs thirty points to stay up. Um, I think it's going to be a low low one this season. I, I think it will be 32 for safety. <laughs> yeah. St Stan Collymore was on the radio on the way home and so was uh, Robbie Savage and they were discussing how many points you need to start this year and Stan said he thought his 32 would keep you up and Robbie Savage thought 34 but so everyone's looking at a very low total this year. Yeah. And even like, and even then, Forest don't have um, Forest. Forest have got a difficult fixture. They got to play Spurs, City, Chelsea. Okay, they've got to play Sheffield United and Burnley. But they've also got to play Everton as well, who are obviously in it. Everton, yeah, Everton have to play like all five of, them, of the five of them teams around them, isn't it? Or yeah. yeah who, sorry, Dad. Who's Everton got left then? So Everton, yeah. So Everton. Because this is the thing as well, is that like the the good thing for us is not just that they've got half pictures, but they're also playing the teams around us. So, you know, obviously then someone's got to lose points in some form. So they've got to play Newcastle, Burnley, Chelsea, Forest, Liverpool, Brentford, Luton, Sheffield United and Arsenal. So, yes, they got to play one, two, well, three. That's nasty as well. Yeah, but they got yeah. quite a good run in, they? they got bottom, the bottom four to play. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, someone's got to drop but points in that, those games. So. Burnley, Burnley are acting like they don't want to go yet, just yet. <laughs> I think it's too little, well, too late, in my opinion, yeah, for Burnley. Totally yeah, what was it? They're four points from safety, no? Was it five? That's right, yeah. 
They were wildly bad goal difference, mind you, didn't they? Yeah, they are. But I mean, so, I'm just saying, like, was yeah, it no, they couldn't get out. They were like 11, 12. Yes. Yeah. And also, as well, I think looking up the table, I think it's difficult for us as well because, like, the, the team in 13th is Bournemouth and they're eight points above us. I know, like, obviously, if we win on Tuesday, then we'll be five points. But realistically, are they going to drop another five points in the running? And it, do you know what I mean? Like, I think. No We're in a weird position where we can't really do any better. So for me, the main things for the end of the season is that the, the players fit in, the players understand the system, we understand the system going forward, and uh, we don't get any long-term injuries or anything like that. I think that, if, and maybe like we score a corner by the end of the season or something like that, then I think that would be a good, that'd be a successful tenure for me, for Glasner, until the end of the season. <laughs> right. Before we go to the comments again, let's talk Dean Henderson. Now, listen, he had a good game. That's, I don't want to hear any more about that. He had a good game yesterday. But let's talk about the goal we conceded, because I think that's become... that Twitter, it's been a crazy debate as to whether or not it's his fault or not. So let, let's talk more on that, because I don't think anyone would disagree, apart from JC's some highlights. Let me watch that, it back. I'll watch it back. <laughs> I... Personally, for me, he had a good game yesterday. Uh, chairman, I totally agree with you. I said it. I said it in, in my vlog. Please watch it. Um, <laughs> I, I thought that the um, the goal was no way his fault. I think if you watch the goal back, you could see that they only had one strike in the box. You had you had Anderson in front of him. You had uh, Richards behind him. No one picked him up. He just ghosted in. It, it was a very and to be fair, he could do that ahead of another fifteen times. He'll go over the bar. He just got it so. He got the spin on it so perfect, he dropped behind the goal. I mean, it, I don't think there's anything anyone could have done. I thought he, I thought um, his catching was good. I thought his kicking was good. His punching at corners was excellent. He got yeah. good distance. I thought all round, he had a very good game, personally. No, absolutely. I mean, just looking back at that goal, and I, I was saying this um, on the back of the Nest of Wars yesterday, I was just saying that it's like, there was a slight moment where he kind of edged as if he was going to go for it and then stopped because he thought, I'm not going to get there. And it's just that step prevented him from getting back to it when it looped over the other side. Mm. So it's, it's, li it's literally, and I'm not blaming him. I'm not like, because I think defensively, Anderson and Richards fell asleep. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. And it's a freak of a header. Like it was a really mm. good header, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just so... that, that what if the step doesn't happen, he gathers it or he tips it over the bar. And it's just these it's just fine margins where we could be looking at this saying a flawless Henderson um performance where and now people are questioning him about like I I don't think Henderson should take any blame personally. I, I know he's not had the best of times for us, and we all agree that Sam Johnson's our number one, but he had a good game yesterday, and I think he did that's how we should see it personally. Yeah, so I've just watched it back, and what happens is Chris Wood is like he's standing on Richards. Richards has got a hold of him, and he makes a diagonal run in behind Anderson, and Anderson doesn't see it, and Richards doesn't follow the man. Mm. So basically, both of them fell asleep a little bit, and then Chris Wood sort of turns around, and it just hits him in the back of the head, and it just. Oh, Perfect. give him a bit more credit. It was, yeah. it was a, yeah. it was a good. It was a no, good. I, I, I know, but I think he, he was sort of standing there thinking, "Oh, I feel like I'm offside here. Let me give it one of them." Mm. And <laughs> it was a very, it was a very good finish because it was so close to going over the bar. It really was. Yeah, it was. But still, oh, JC, goal, did you see goal, the, goal. the little step that Henderson takes as well? It's such fine margins with it. If you watch it back, yeah, he he, he takes a, a quick step forward because he thinks yeah. he's going to go for it. Realizes he can't get a, he can't get above the man, and then it's a great cross from Gibbs White. To be fair, but yeah, it was. I, th I think if a, I think if a cross comes in from the side, then the keeper generally comes out, and punches it away. But this cross didn't come in from the side. It sort of came in very, sort of I don't know what diagonal, I suppose. Came in more straighter, didn't it? Yeah. So well, he, sort of, he sort of hit it from the side, but he sort of curled it so it came straight towards the goal. And, and, and you'll probably say as well that way, if I can remember it, that probably would. 
And the word on Anderson were probably obscuring his view a bit anyway from when the ball was coming in. So maybe he thought, well, I can get that, then maybe I can't get that. But yeah. obviously, by that that little mistake, as you said, I think that's been very ultra critical, isn't it? Yeah, it's literally trying to find fine minute detail yeah. in it. It's it's literally it's it's unfortunate. That's that's yeah, massively, it's, yeah. it's just unfortunate. Um, but yeah, but then he, he made some good saves from distance. I, I don't think there was really any clear cut chance for his game. There wasn't one Not chance really in the not. first half. Ed. No. Two in the second, but that was straight at him. You expect I, him to save him. Yeah, I think his um. His uh, punching actually from like crosses into the they box was—I yeah, thought that was that was very good. I yeah. would say definitely. Um, and then obviously we were so close to winning it at the end as well. You know, it was crazy. Cause I was out with uh, Steph and the girls, like we went we gravity and whatnot, and like the, the reception down there, then it was just so bad. Like even with my five G phone, I'm just like, is this game finished? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, like, it was so horrible, you know. And then I saw four times, like, okay, cool, I can I can breathe now. Um, but yeah, Mun- Munoz was unlucky with that header right at the end, and um, it, it was nice to not concede after the 75th minute. Yeah, it makes a change, I would isn't say. it? It makes a massive, massive change. Cool, all right, JC, let's get through a few more comments and then uh, we'll do player ratings. All right, uh, I feel like we weren't far off it. Uh, if you can get eight to nine points in the last nine games, I think it will keep us safe. Uh, yeah, we needed four points in the last two games. We've only got two. Underperformed in terms of points. Uh, been an issue all season. Squad depth is a bit <laughs> for me. Uh, I know what you're saying, but look at our bench. A couple more injuries and how many points will you get. Burnley are fighting. Uh, not likely to go down. Big up Chris, another points deduction for Everton could be really bad for them. Are they going to get another one? I think there yeah. was like talk about it, but I don't know what, I don't actually know what's happening. I think it's the same one as Forrest. Mm. I think they had a similar thing, so but they haven't mentioned anything yet. Yeah, Tim says, I, f- I think the results will come back when Elise is back. Tougher games, but a win and a handful of draws will get us there. Also, I think Glasner's tactics are making us better, but I could be naive. I don't think so. I think his tactics are definitely make us better. Uh, <laughs> Henderson, ouch! He's uh, uh, Henderson had a great game for you. Uh, not his fault. John Stone saves that. I don't think he does, personally. Nor a broken elbow. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he saves that. It was just a the loop on the ball. It was just. Nothing you could do about it, personally. I don't have a chance, but I agree it wasn't his fault. That header had Welbeck vibes, unfortunately. Yeah, Welbeck's header was stupid. <sighs> that was an embarrassing goal to concede. Uh, spiritual, do you troll an all football podcast by winding people up? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I, I'll say this. Spiritual's not a troll, but this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see Schlapp back. We've missed him. Oh, Ali, God, Ali, Ali, Ali I'll, what I'll say is, <laughs> is book your next trip to the ATM because my 50 quid's coming. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whitworth is better than Henderson. The shots were straight at him. Uh, people on Henderson like the Mitchell Bunny's in. Come on, lads, hit the like button. Big up yourself. Hate speculations on deductions. Another panel looking for Everton's. Uh, another panel are looking at Everton, so points deduction could be possible. Uh, why are people blaming Eze because he missed? He missed chances. two sitters. Yeah. And I think the Everton points deduction is announced this week. The second lot, they're going to get a new one. Okay. That's good. Well, if, I mean, if, they another, if they get another one, they're gone. Well, we said earlier, Richard. Guess it depends what um ha- what, what? If, so I'm they think it's four it. four points because Everton are on twenty five right now, and Luton and Forest are on twenty two. Just give them three point deduction, make it interesting. <laughs> give everyone twenty two points, then, isn't it? No, seriously, if they do get a four point deduction and go to twenty one, Burnley are licking their lips. 
And Burnley only got a chance <laughs> because of the point deductions in it, nothing else in it. Oh, 100 percent No, but like I said, they've recently been picking up points. I tell, you, <laughs> I tell you who's been performing lately, but they're just not, not finishing the games off is Sheffield. Oh yeah. They've been performing, but they just can't finish the game off. Hmm. They play well yesterday. I watched that this after this morning. Actually, they were three one up against Fulham, and Fulham were dead. And then that that guy, I can't remember his name. Speak of the Yeah, where yeah, have they found him from? Gold. He's from Fluminense. I he he's yeah, he's cracking, cracking third goal. goal. If you haven't seen it, <laughs> he's he got like eight goals and since January. <laughs> it's mad. Let's 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 do the player ratings, and I'm just gonna ask all you, man. What you think? Because I've got no idea. <laughs> All right. So we'll go Rich, Chairman Dan. So first up, we've got Dean Henderson. Ten. So, I'll give him a seven. Okay. Uh, Tyreek Mitchell, if I can find him. Um. Six, and not because I don't think he played too badly. I, I really fear for him because he just doesn't suit the system. Mm. Mm. Um, Munoz. Um, first off, he was really good. I suppose second off, he was quite. I think he deserves a seven as well. For he's a bit quiet a second off, but then he did did it in the post. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Richards. Hmm. He's been good in this system, by the way. He's very composed. Uh, see, now you've put Munoz in seven. I can't really put Richards up. I'll put him in six. I think Munoz deserves an eight, by the way. Personally. It was, it was my man, I actually must admit. Personally. Yeah. But, uh, Sl- uh, slightly followed by uh, Ward. Henderson, personally. Oh, okay. Joe Ward. This is for me, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say a five. I don't think he had a really bad game, but he didn't give the ball away so many times. Yeah. Made a lot of mistakes. Nothing major that would have contributed to a goal, mind you, but he really yeah. did, you know, lot he tried to long range passes, kick, kicking it out of play all the time. Uh Joachim Anderson. I think he was the best of the three. Um arguably I think he deserves a six because I think he was partly involved with their goal. Okay. Uh, let's go with Jefferson Lerma. Uh, sound game for me. And that pass to, that, that led to the goal. Uh, seven. Uh, Adam Wharton. Yeah, seven for me. Only problem with him is his fitness, isn't it? But he is a, he's a fabulous tackler as well. I don't think it's not credit for the tackling he does. He never gives fouls away, but just wins the ball so cleanly. But yeah, yeah. seven for me. Get fitter and you'll be an eight. Uh, Are you rating uh, his footballing skills or his um, physical appearance? Hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eze. Um, he did get an assist, but I thought he... I don't know. I thought he... <sighs> he blew very hot and cold, I thought. Like sometimes it's quality, but decision making was just letting him down six. Got him. Um, he, should, he should have scored. He should have scored. Yeah. Are you? Is it me? Um, yeah, yeah. It's not his best. I'm five, but mm, I'm thinking four. Easily. Yeah. He didn't even know he was on the didn't pitch. Do anything? Yeah. No. Finally, to round it out, JP goes another tattoo. Nice. Hey! <laughs> um, where's where's no, I'm gonna JP a, go? I want to give him a seven as well because I thought he, he played really well. He, he was absolutely shattered at the end. Really was shattered at the end, but he gave everything and he can't ask for more than that. So, yeah, solid seven for me. Uh, I think the subs were Hughes. Yeah, Hughes, Schlup. Um... You know what? He helped to see the game out, I guess. Normally, when he comes on, we concede, and he, he didn't happen this time, so five. Uh, Schlapp. Um, I thought he was all right, to be fair. Um, he's between a five and a six for me. Uh, yeah, five. 
Did anyone else come on? Did Amma come on or not? Nah. No. Was it, I think? Yeah, was it? Was it yeah. the two? Yeah. I guess so, yeah. No, Kleiny. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Klein came on, didn't he? That was I don't know. I, 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 I give him a five. I don't think he even touched the ball. So that is the player ratings. Well, that sort of goes how the game was because we didn't really control the game at all, but we just had loads of chances which we didn't put away. But we had very little control. Absolutely. Just average game, yeah. I think I'll just drop the link. I don't know. Yeah, they dropped the link, yeah. guys. We'll uh, do another like 14, 15 minutes. Uh, did you, you um, did you like know. what Glasner said after the game in an interview by BBC? When he gave it the old Sam Allardyce, you you got to respect the point that when you're playing away in the Premiership, I put it was terrific. <laughs> I did like the fact that he said it was two points lost. Yeah, because under previous regime, it's a point gained. So, and the other <laughs> good thing about him was he actually walked across the field at the end and stood in the front of the Palace fans clapping him. Yeah, so he, that he's was definitely doing himself to the, to the fans. Yeah. And, um, Yeah, on this not spiritual, there's a lot of Eze haters. Listen, Eze, Eze's quality. He just got to work. He's just got to tidy up a few bits, just polish yeah. up a few bits. But he, he's quality. Like, I think Eze's he's got to realize he doesn't have to do. It. He doesn't have to do it all on his own, does he? Yeah. yeah how, 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 many, how many times have you said that about Wilf? No, no, yeah, no I agree. Totally agree. Will, Will, Eze is a new Wilf. No question about it. In every yeah. way. At the end of the day, if Eze goes to a one of the top six clubs, he won't have to worry about that. No, exactly. So, Tim, How's it happy going? Easter, guys. Happy, happy Easter, Easter, Tim. How's it going? It's going good. Going good. Yeah, res respect the point. I mean, I'm disappointed, but res respect the point. I thought it was, and the the uh, I'll, I'll double down on the uh, on the away vlog. That was brilliant. The eight <laughs> out of ten for the Big Mac. Why is that too good? Too much is it? <laughs> well, I mean that is that's maybe the that's maybe the four or five out of ten burger here in the U.S. But hey, you do you, man. <laughs> I mean, it's it okay. It just kept falling apart, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe they're amazing. Maybe they're amazing in the U.K. I have no idea. I've never had a, a U.K. Big Mac. No, it was great. But I mean, thank you, Mike. I, I, I wanted to give um, just can I do you mind if I hit you guys with a uh, with a stat that I think is is pretty interesting. Speaking oh, to Decore, so there's the preview for it. Um, and Wharton's through ball, which so disappointing that that Ebbs couldn't fit, finish it. But we have three games so far this year where more than a third of our through balls we've we've had 42 so far this season. There have been 15 in three matches. Can you name the three? Can you guess what they are? One, we had six. One, we had five. Another, we had four. And it has entirely to do with the players on the pitch. I mean, you've well, talked to it at the beginning. You lost three games? <laughs> not, the last, not the last three. Burnley? Burn yeah. Not Burnley. Burnley. I'm sorry. I thought you were going to go. So I'll give you one. It's not Burnley. Sheffield United. That was okay. four. So that's the first game of the season. Okay. Not the first no, game, no, no, the one at home. The second one. Second but one at Wolves. home. Uh, Wolves um, at home. So that Luton? Luton away. Yep. Luton away. That that one was six. What are you? <laughs> wow. And and the third, one. Well, the third one is the third one's Villa away. That one's oh, that one's five. So that is the, between those games, you have at least you have Decore on the on the pitch for two of those games. And you have Elise on the pitch for two of those games. You actually have in the Luton game, that's the only one where you have all three. So, I mean, what and you then, said earlier. Two of them came off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what you said earlier, when we get Decore back, him with Wharton playing this system is going to be, I think, very exciting. I just want us to get the points so we can find out what Glasner wants to do. Like, who's he going to play? Who's he testing out? So we can kind of get a preview of what we're going to look at for next season because next season's looking 
I'm not going to say I'm not going to jinx it, but it at least looks interesting. It's like exciting, you know, thinking about yeah. the summer and what might come. Yeah, especially hearing that we're taking out a loan to go buy more players as well. Yeah, that, that sounds interesting. But speaking well, of, um, is it true that we've taken away the discounts for? Yeah, yeah, NHS yeah, and oh my, our gosh, army people, yeah, discounts yeah. then. That's that. That doesn't. That that feels. I, I. It feels weird for me to comment on it because that's you know for. I guess it's. I guess it's NHS employees and then public service employees like you know police. I, it feels weird that you don't at least like. Hey, I. If if you're the club and you feel like cash flow is important, okay. But like this doesn't feel much different. You tell me, but this feels, it doesn't feel much different than kind of the ham handed way the club is dealing with the Homesdale right now. Like we have the, you know, the banner that goes over the ad and you can't have the banner over the ad, like figure something out. I get it. The club needs cash, but figure something out. There's, it, it feels like just some compromise is needed here. Mm. Well, I saw, I don't know how true it was and I don't, I don't know the working outs behind it, but. I've seen people replying in response to response to it about that it, it costs it gains a club twenty five grand or something like that, which I mean, as we all know, is like what a third of some players' wages for a week. <laughs> yeah, if that. So yeah, I don't think we're the only team doing it, are we? We're no, we're talking not. about this in a pub yesterday. I heard it was four Spurs. or five championship teams of all. Yeah, I think West Ham as well and Chelsea have dropped the. Um, have dropped the concessions. Yeah, it's not the company you want to be in, though, is it? Like, you no. really don't want to. You don't want to be in the company of like these cheapskate clubs. I don't know. It feels a little. It feels a little weird. But on that, on that loan, that's just timing. Yeah. Like the the smart thing about it is there's going to be a lot of clubs that are going to be looking to sell before June thirtieth. A lot of fiscal year is going to end at June thirtieth. So Chelsea's going to be definitely in the market to sell a bunch. Probably Villa, they're going to be in the market to to sell a bit. Newcastle, probably, probably new. Yeah, mm. Newcastle might be in the market to sell. Wouldn't be surprised if Forest are in the market to to sell a little bit as well. I mean, I don't know. It's it's hard yeah, they, to really know. I've heard with Forest they've got to sell a few players. You know, so apparently Taiwo might be. A possibility. I mean, there's it, it. It's it feels smart. I don't think we can be too indulgent. I would bet for Palace if we can get one of our targets at a better than expected price before June thirtieth. You take it, but most of the buying is going to have to be after July first because then you got a new fiscal year. Then you got money from wherever we finished during the season and you can start over. So it's probably going to be July. So I don't think anybody should get too excited. Like we're going to be buying a whole bunch early in the season. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. It's still palace. But if you have those loans, you have some flexibility. I personally would love to see like, who's, who's the right target. Like if you could get a good striker target that we know, or one of the center backs, if it's mascara, her, I mean, I, I want Edwards. I don't think I've been made it a secret that I badly want Ronnie Edwards, but like any of those players, if you can get them in at the right price, that's what that loan does. Smart. I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't mind both of them. I wouldn't either, <laughs> to be honest. Um, don't, don't, don't you think, though, Tim, that um, I, I think to me, it's an, I'll look at it another way. I think we are going to sell either Eze, Elise or Mark, or probably yep. maybe two to three. And I think that if we sell, just how we sell Eze for 70 million, just for, just for the ballpark figure, and then other teams know we've got 70 million from Eze, and we go and buy another player bef after we sold him, their price goes up because they know we've got money. But if we buy a player before we sold Eze, then yes. yeah. I think and that's where the loan's coming from. That, that's why, that's why yeah. we've got the loan, so we can spend the money before we make it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Um, Saves, so but just to clarify, I'm talking about Ronnie <laughs> Edwards. I'm not talking about Marcus Edwards. 
But either way, do you not rate him? Yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> oh, sure, I don't get what you mean. <laughs> you don't rate him, but he's a good player. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm a I mean, going. I mean, I kind, I kind of get it a little bit. I feel like he's got a little bit of the Marcus Rashford going on about him. I don't think Fair he'll enough. do that well. I don't think he'll do that well in the Premier League. I say I say that. Good player, but I don't think he's Premier League ready. Oh yeah, that, that might make sense. That's probably where he's saying that. Um I've seen that Joe's a bit of a professional. Mitch so probably too much says it to be answered. <laughs> Great shout. <laughs> Great shout. <laughs> I still bet Chelsea will just try to ignore FFP. I don't. I you know what? I think Mitch is right about this because I don't think they have much choice. I think they're going to hire lawyers and go for it because I think they're way too far behind. You know what I would do, though? Like, I would be buying in Chelsea's academy because they're going to ask way too much for yeah. their first team players. They're still going to they're still going to try to get 50 million pounds for Connor Gallagher and no one's going to pay that. Not a single yeah. team. I I would bet decent money that that is never going to happen. But they got tons of players that they want to sell in their academy, and those are all mm. pure profit. Every one of them. Go mm. get them. Who, um, I, who does, I'd like... um, Amari Hutchinson's uh, Chelsea, isn't he? No, Ipswich. Yeah, on... <laughs> no, he's a tiny player, to be fair. I'll tell you one. one Kills our I neighbor, like. you know that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've let them know a few times. <laughs> <laughs> but I, Newcastle still haven't permanently signed Lewis Hall. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? That's a good point. I don't know why. It might be injuries. No, but... that's because they can't. That's because that's because they can't yet. But you would think they would have said something that this deal is going to be done. Mm. But remember, we had it all like paperwork done, loan Literally. sheet done. Yeah, uh, apparently uh, the, I don't think I don't think the uh, the shirt I don't think it was the same thing as Flynn Downs where we had the shirt shirt pictures done, but if we already had that kind of I, I guess that sort of contact with him where we've got so much done, if we go to Chelsea we say look we can like, we can match or I wouldn't say we can match uh, Newcastle's offer but if we can compete with it and it's an option, you know he's he's hardly played for Newcastle granted he's been injured. But do you think maybe he might swap Newcastle for us, maybe? Because with Tino Livermento, is he really going to be playing that much? That's a good point. Whereas in our new system, he knows he's going to play ahead of Mitchell week in, week out. Mm. And he's good going forward as well, to be fair to him. Yeah, he would be... As long as he can stay fit. Like Someone like him or Martin would be fantastic left wing backs. Yeah, Martin's a... Yeah, he's a Dortmund. That right, yeah, he'll get a big move. Yeah, that's it. So big up to Luke, by the way. Big up and um, Rob. He was. I was just on um, FF TV with them. He was having the, like a proper back and forth with Ant, which was hilarious. So yeah, guys, go subscribe to Forest Fan TV as well. They're, they're good, good bunch over there and stuff. That Wolfie can be a bit of a yeah. <laughs> nah, they're doing a laugh. And um, <clears throat> did Jay Z pitch the on air from the chairman? It is. Wow. <laughs> he he stole my setup for that day. <laughs> um, our pal is safe now. Just seen the run in it. Looks hot. Uh, we're not safe. We're not safe until we're safe. Um, Did but... you know something, Rich? To be fair, we're eight points in front of Luton. There's eight games to go for Luton, so they've got an average a point a game just to catch us up. Yeah, I'm not saying we're safe. But it's going to take some absolute miracle for us to get drop, to drop down now. Yeah. But we, you know where they I go think, next. I Luton think we're go, safe. Luton yeah, goes to the safe. Emirates next. Did it really? Yeah. Yes. But we, have, we, have to, we have game. to win a game, though. We've yeah. got to find a way of winning a game. Yeah, we will yeah, do. Yeah. We will do at some point. It'd be, it'd be we'll something where you don't expect it. We'll probably beat City or something stupid like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> or away it's, at Liverpool. You say that, Dan, but we've done it before, haven't we? Yeah. Saying that, Bournemouth aren't very good at home. So I, I hey, Callum, 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 let's not jinx anything. I, I'm just saying they're, they're not very good at home. That's all I'm saying. They're not very good at home. My only concern with that, Dan, no, is Dan, that we run ourselves into the ground yesterday. You've got history with this, Dan. 
Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Who do Stop you think? It. I can remember I, a certain Leicester vlog. Can I ask you? <laughs> that, that that was under Vieira. We're now under Glasner. Think times have changed. Oh, famous last words. Do you think? <laughs> at, is there? What's the rotation at at Bournemouth? Like, does does any youth player get a get a shout? No, for no, no, no chance. I, I wouldn't. Be, I, I would rather that rotation up against City. So is it because same lineup? It's a game. Same lineup at Bournemouth. Yeah, we we've got to look to win this game. That's that's how I see it. I think if the only change could be if Eddie's fit. If Edward's fit, I think he comes in for Matera only because he looked absolutely shattered yesterday. Mm. And we've got another game on Saturday as well. Right? It's three games in a week. Yeah, yeah. it's a yeah. Mid- midday kickoff as well. So yeah, but I, I would rather us make the change to get City in a game which you're not really expected to do anything in. Yeah, a game it's a good point, actually. Where we are, to be honest. So, I mean, to be and fair, I'll put, I'll put you, Alicia on the bench if he's fit. If you look at the and away fixture against City, that's what sort of brought Ozo into the frame this season, mm, yeah. isn't it? He had a great yeah. game. Like, you never know if we if we want to rest an IU, if we want to rest Eze, we could play Franco Ume, we could play Trialers B, the original, because he played in the yeah. Bill friendly and scored. So Glasner's de- and he put him on the bench against Forrest as well. So yeah. Glasner's definitely looking into this U team and thinking, oh, you know what? Yeah, some of them are actually decent. Yeah. So and on that know. note, before we, we wrap up, I wasn't even mad. And I, I normally am one that gets mad seeing the likes of Hughes and that uh, come on. But I think for yesterday's game, I wasn't mad. I, I wasn't mad at it. Three for Hughes That's came on, did pretty well. Schluck came on. Booted this bloke straight up in the air with about two seconds being on it, got a booking, and then he did okay after that. But he could have got sent off actually, couldn't he? Sent off, he got into Bob another sort of 50 50 ish tackle, didn't he? Mm. But no, it was the right decision all at the right time. No, absolutely. Right, I guess we wrap it up there. Um, geez, the game's coming thick and fast. Um, I guess we may have to do a preview for Bournemouth game tomorrow. <laughs> We'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, well, me oh, and JC no, are down there. It's such easy afternoon or Tuesday night. Oh, yeah, you are, aren't you? Got a nice little annual leaf sorted as well, haven't you? No, I'm, I'm working. I start my new job Tuesday. So it's your new job straight to Bournemouth. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. It wasn't. It yeah, so we wish you all like the best that. on Tuesday and Wednesday, by the way. Um. <laughs> Karma. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well. Boy. Yeah, guys, I appreciate you all for for, for tuning in. Um yeah, we'll hopefully be back tomorrow with a preview for the Bournemouth game. Um, which will mean there's no tactical for that game this week. No, we we'll, no tactical will be no tactical well, no tact eagle for Bournemouth because they haven't really changed at all because Iriel is still playing the same system. He's just got his players yeah. playing now. We are going to be doing a tact eagle for City. City. Yeah. Right. On Wednesday. <laughs> uh, but that will come out slightly early. I think we're planning to go live 6.45, 6.30-ish. Yeah, I've got to go work. Cool, cool. That's not a problem. Um, and obviously on the Saturday, I, I'm missing the game. Um, JC's not happy with who is taking my place by... <laughs> <laughs> Well, a certain editor, which also likes Manchester City for some weird reason. For other reasons. Well, for other reasons. I say not footballing not, reasons. Not footballing reasons. She's yeah. going to she's gonna do play cam. She, she's going to sit there and she's going to watch... <laughs> Certain players that he's say, injured anyway. Jack, it's got to be Jack Grealish, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not. That's the worst thing about it. <laughs> it's that Norwegian twat up front. <laughs> Who's that? Parland. <laughs> uh, She's here. <laughs> Erling Parland. It's Adam Wood. Uh, <laughs> he's only twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys, thank you very much for watching. This is the Mad Football. This is the player. 
Well, not even a player. You know what? Yeah, this is the match review. <laughs> his head's gone. His head's gone. <laughs> Up the palace. Eagle. Up the palace. Eagle. <laughs>